to the Practical Prophetic, where prophetic ministry is made practical. I'm Beth Wingate, I'm your host, and welcome to the podcast. On our podcast today, I have my mom, Judy Holmes, back on the show. Welcome, Mom, Judy. Thank you. Hi. Yes, you are back, and today we are talking about the everyday practical prophetic power in the fruits of the spirit we cannot overlook the fruits of the spirit and the power they can bring into your life because fruit is something that has to be produced in you you don't just wake up and have the fruits of the spirit you have to cultivate Ooh, the fruits yes. of the spirit in your and life you yes. never stop and you never stop that's right. And so we are following the fruits of the Spirit based out of Galatians chapter 5. And we know that the definition of prophetic, that Hebrew root word, that all those words for prophecy or to prophesy in your King James Bible go back to this Hebrew word called Naba, that means to basically be inspired of the Holy Spirit. And so prophecy is just to have the inspiration of, of the Holy Spirit operating right. in your life. Why don't you go ahead real quick and tell us the story when Jesus turned to his disciples and said, <laughs> who do men say that I am? Well, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say that you are different people that have been killed. And all of a sudden, I, it's almost like I can see Peter. He gets this epiphany. He gets it right from God for the very first time on planet, I believe, on planet Earth. A person has got the real revelation. You're the Christ. You're the son of the living God. Now, I know Mary knew it. John the Baptist knew it. But I think that there's a, a difference here. I think that it was more than just knowing it. He said it out loud. And he knew it. And Jesus answered him and said, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, Simon Peter but by the Spirit. And so he's saying, Simon Peter, you didn't get this from reading a book, from your mother or daddy or a priest. You got this straight from God. And I believe, just like Jesus said, and upon this rock, I will build my church in the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I believe that this is the ultimate in revelation of hearing God, of the prophetic. When you know that you know, there is a lot of things I say that is just scripture, and that is God's word. But yet there is a time when God will put his scripture with his own word and there is just nothing like it when you know that I mean when you hear that there's no way anybody can knock you off that you've got it right. down right and that's an example of prophetic revelation that is an example of prophecy part of my mission is to demystify the prophetic to make right. it practical Every you know, it is life. practical, Beth. Right. It is. If you can't use first the Word of God practically in your life, then what good is it to you? See, I believe that the Word of God, it will help me in being a mother, being a grandmother now, and will help me being a wife, even though we have been married 50 coming on 52 years I still a month ago heard pro prophetically but it was 
No one else told me it was from the Spirit of the Lord. Told me that I needed to straighten up because I had prayed for my husband and I to be have time together and do things together. And it's almost like a together overload because he's retired <laughs> and he doesn't have one thing that he does. He doesn't have the outside friends. He doesn't have a hobby or anything. And so we were, you know, button heads. And it was like, and I was just so mad one day. And the, and the Lord spoke to my heart and he said, you have prayed for 50 years for you and Philip to have time together. He was always working, always And so I said, yeah, I know, Lord. And he said, I've given you what you asked for. You're blowing it. That's exactly what God told me. So so that's another example of God prophetically, the Holy Spirit prophetically speaking to you in your everyday life. And so that's part of my mission is to demystify the prophetic to make it practical, to help you understand that the Word of God is living, active, and that the Holy Spirit can speak through His Word and can speak to you as an individual. And so when you allow that to happen, when you spend time in the Word, when you spend time in prayer, when you spend time in worship, then you can allow the Word of God to grow in your life and produce fruit. And those fruits are the fruits of the Spirit. And so we have to partner with that. We have to be active with the Holy Spirit to produce fruit in our lives. And so today, we are going to focus in on peace and patience. And I think that's something that all of us need. Yes. Well, you know, that coming back to that recent time that the Lord spoke to me, because there was no peace in our house. We had get, gotten out of peace with each other. I, you know, I can't imagine anybody else doing that, but I did. And the Lord said, you're blowing it. Stop it. And, you know, that somebody might say, you mean the Lord talks to you that way? Yes, he does. The Lord is hard on me, but I absolutely beg for the Lord to be hard on me because I want to be the kind of Christian mother, wife, friend that the Lord would want me to be. And to be that, I can't be, well, poor old Judy, he's mean to her. No, the Lord told me you're blowing it, which made me stop and take account. And so I started from that moment on looking at everything differently. And guess what? It was me. It really was me on on this occasion. And I absolutely got to watch God usher peace back into our home. And it's a beautiful thing. God does not want for us as husbands and wives to be at odds with each other. And only the enemy can benefit from that. I remember a scripture, and I wasn't ready with this, but I'm going to put it out there. It says that where there is envy and strife, there is every evil work. That's why the devil wants to keep people in strife, because with it, part of the tentacles of it is every evil work. Where there is is envy and strife, there is every evil work. I don't want every evil work working in my house. And so I have to, it, it didn't just, well, I want to get along with my husband. That's part of it. But the biggest part of it is I don't want to give the the devil ammunition to come blow me up. I want to keep right with God, knowing that his angels are there to protect us and to 
watch over us if we're in peace. So we've got to get we've got to get a hold of some things, and that's that was just the Lord speaking to my heart. Stop it! You're blowing it. Right. Well, let's dig into the word peace and dig into the word patience. I have the Hebrew root word okay. for peace and patience. The one for peace is shalom, of course. It's mentioned Love in the it. Bible over 200 times, and it basically means completeness. It means soundness for your welfare but but the most basic definition is completeness and i believe that when we do not operate in peace we are operating incomplete yes yes there's things god might want to give us that would be so beneficial to our christian walk or our family but he can't do it because we have to oper- we have to operate in the confines of God's word to be blessed. Right. And, Absolutely. And so we're incomplete when we don't. Absolutely. Let me give us some scriptures for peace. I have several lined okay. up and I'll just let you jump in and say things as you need to say them. But John fourteen twenty seven. It says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, but as I giveth unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So this is speaking about peace from heaven, supernatural peace that is beyond what the world can give. You know, Beth, one of the things I want to bring up right here is that the Fruits of the Spirit are actually weapons and also things that we have to stop the enemies, like, uh, what were they called, Patriot missiles that would catch the bomb? Right, Right. during the Iraq War, Patriot missiles were defensive, and they intercepted those Scud missiles. And and to give you a picture of the of how God's word works, when you are operating in peace, in patience, especially when it's hard, you know, you're in the middle of a warfare, God will absolutely catch angels, will catch some of these things that the enemy has got going where there is envying and strife there is every evil work well how do you think it is if you're in peace well i believe peace is a defensive weapon but i also believe it's an offensive weapon let me give you a scripture for that romans 12 says in verse 18 and 21 if possible as much as you live it live peaceably with all men Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. And it also, we know, says in Matthew that blessed are the peacemakers. Yes. There's a blessing that comes with being peaceable. But I also want to shift gears and talk about how you can have inner peace. Yes. Philippians 4, 6 says, do not be anxious for anything. Instead, in every situation, with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, tell your request to God, and the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I just want to say that the peace that passes all understanding, that keeps your heart and mind, is really getting yourself into God's Word and knowing and trusting God. Because I don't trust me, I don't trust my mind, I don't trust the doctor really, but I do trust God. And I get into his word and I hear how God is going to keep me and provide for me. I don't worry, I don't sit here and worry and go get food to put up because my Bible says that I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread 
it just won't happen for me. But it won't just happen because it's in the Bible. God right. is not, I want to, I want to put something out there for everybody. God is not moved by your tears. God is not moved by your problems. God is not moved by your fear of something happening. God is moved by faith. In you reading his word, speaking his word, and trusting his word. If God were moved by your problems, the devil would be moving God all the time. Right. And that is just not how it works. God is moved by faith and without faith it is impossible to please God and so that's how that is the number one way I can have peace is knowing God has got everything taken care of for me and how do I know that because it says in Hebrews 4 for we which have believed do enter into rest As he said, I have sworn in my wrath, although the works were finished, just waiting on them from the foundation of the world. So God's already made and has laid out ready for you everything you're ever going to need. Do you always receive it? No. The children of Israel did not receive it. In fact, he uses them as an example to us of how not to be. No matter where they went and what they were doing, they were complaining. They were always looking to their flesh, wanting to get water, wanting to get meat, wanting this, wanting that, and not trusting That God was able, even though they had already seen all the miracles, the plagues, the, you know, the Red Sea held back, crossing it on dry ground. They saw water coming out of a rock, all these things. And then they still complained and built a calf to a foreign God. And so this is who gave us took us from the desert i mean and so we have got to trust god and realize it's faith that moves god when you step over and step into word word land instead of worry land your life will be transformed i can promise you you've got to get out of worry land And get into word land and not come out of it. You can't go back and forth because James 1 says, He that wavers is like the wave of the sea. Let that man not think he'll receive anything from God. You've got to get over there into word land and stay in it and then have patience. Right. To know that if God promises, he's able to deliver. And who are the Wonder Twins in the Bible? Faith and patience. Faith and patience. Always, they're the twins that run together. You're never going to get anything from God without faith. And you're not going to get it without patience. Right. You know, God is, uh, he will show, he will put you to the test on your patience. And it's to grow you. But he's never too late. He'll always come through. I have seen God come through and I'm going, it's the midnight hour and God comes through. When everybody else is saying, oh, that's not going to happen. God comes through. Right. And and Paul teaches us in Hebrews 4 that the things that happened to the children of Israel in the wilderness were an example to us. And the reason that some of them could not enter in is because they didn't have peace and they didn't have 
faith and they didn't have patience. It was that doubt and unbelief that kept them out right. of the promised land, most of them, all but two. And so we don't want to be like that. He's telling us, hey, be a, be a warning, be aware. This is a cautionary tale. Don't do right. what they did. And so you have to, once you have, you know, peace produces patience and patience produces peace if you will let it work. And that is the fruit of the spirit. But you have to, it has to be supernatural. Like it said, it's peace from heaven that surpasses all understanding. Amen. That's right. In fact, let me give us a couple of more scriptures in Proverbs sixteen thirty two. It says, patience is better than power mm. and controlling one's temper better than capturing a city. And so if you want to know what's stronger than power, the Bible just told us that patience is better than power. That's, that's powerful. That's powerful right there. Yes, <laughs> that's powerful. And then in Hebrews six eleven, it says, we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness to have the full assurance of hope until the end so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Amen. So this shows us, too, that faith is not passive, but active. Yes, it's offensive. Yes. yes, you have to you go on the offense when you operate in patience. And I believe that's the same for peace that that we have to be. These are action words that we have to put into action, letting our spirit man dominate, control and lead us with these things, not our flesh man, because the flesh will get in there and, you know, oh, no, you don't understand what the doctor said or my boss said or, you know, right. whatever. And, and you get to looking at your circumstances. Well, that's logic. But the Bible also says there is a way that seems right to man, but in the end, it brings death. You cannot always approach everything with logic. You've no. got to go and appeal there to heaven. There is nothing logical about, right. you know, the way God always seems to do things. It's, it bypasses logic. And faith is really... Believing, just plain believing God and zipping your mouth right. about the problem and what you think will happen. Uh, we had a little thing recently, and I'm trying to remember. I think it was for our whole church. We were doing something, and rain was predicted. And uh, my other daughter, Kristen, said, Mom, you're going to have to believe God for the the weather because they're predicting rain and I said okay well I started praying and asking you know God and you're somebody saying well what scripture do you have basis I have a scripture basis for that what manner of man is this that even the wind and the waves obey him and that was Jesus and then he turned to the disciples and he was angry with them because they didn't do it oh you of little faith and so I God's just given me great faith when it comes to weather I don't know why and I will just say tell Kristen uh, it's fine it's not going to rain here it rained everywhere but where the youth, I think, were doing something. That is just putting out God's word, standing on it, and I'm going, you know, you don't have a, have a chance to rain there, rain. You've got to go somewhere else, at least until a certain time. Then you, you're free to go. You're free to rain. <laughs> so some people are saying, well, that's kind of stupid. Well, that's okay. I'm the one that gets the rain held back and the tornadoes <laughs> and things like that. So, right. I mean, Moses, when the children of Israel approached the Red Sea, it looked like they were mm -hmm. trapped. It looked like there was no way out. I'm sure they saw the Egyptian chariots coming down the hill toward them, yes. the whole army, and it looked like there was nowhere to go. But God. And, <laughs> but God, and you know, Beth, the very thing that God, that looked like would be their deaths, turned out to be 
the death of the enemy because the chariots and everything, they were running after them too, and they got drowned. So right, that's what defeated their enemy. What was What was meant to be their demise became the demise of their enemy. And so really what we're saying is to be able to walk in peace and patience, it really requires supernatural the supernatural in your life that's going to be you getting in your word drawing close to the holy spirit and prayer and worship in your word and then the holy spirit is going to bring those scriptures back to your memory he's going to send that perfect song to you at the perfect moment he's going to have someone say something to you at the perfect moment he's going to give you all these reassurances But you're going to be able to know that you know that no matter what the circumstances look like, you can walk in peace and you can have patience. When when everybody's telling you, you know, you've got to give up right now, you've run out of time and, you know, you know that you know, no, I'm going to do what the Lord told me to do. Right. You just have to almost, I call it flint faced faith. You have to set your face like flint. And be very stubborn and very uh, like a a dog with a bone. You have to hold on to the word that God has given you, whether it be a scripture, whether it be a word somebody gave you or, or whatever. Maybe it was a message. Maybe it was a song. But when you know that that has resonated, that the Holy Spirit has breathed a rhema word into you, then you hold on to that. You partner with it. And that will give you peace and enable you to have patience. Amen. One of the the things that I thought about was recently I asked my fresh oil class, what would you do? What what one thing would you do if someone walked in and they had guns drawn, I'm a weapon drawn? I was really amazed at some of the answers because, you know, ones that I would duck under the pew or the chairs, ones that I would run, the other ones said I would cry, the ones that I would pray. And uh, anyway, I would take that time to stand up and say no weapon that's formed against me can prosper and I right now take and I arrest the spirit of death in Jesus name because God has given us that kind of authority that's pretty far out there and that's pretty dramatic but because of God's word. Now, don't, you don't need to do it if you don't believe it. If you haven't got faith for it, you know. But when you keep putting God's word and you see all the times that God has defended his people. To me, it's easy. It's like I've told in another when my dad was getting delivered of a demonic spirit and he tried his best to hit me or that spirit through him and he couldn't and I at that moment knew this is what people are talking about that God protected them and nothing could harm them I knew I was in a shield that nothing could touch me And so when you know that, but it takes faith, it takes faith in God, trusting him, knowing him, being acquainted with his ways, and it's the most exciting life there is. This is more exciting living this kind of life than any nightclub you could ever go to. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Without the costing you and without all the hang up. This right. is better than going and gambling. God's word, when you really get into kingdom living and you start walking around like you have authority in this life and you're not just some, you know, person on planet Earth. When you walk around with the with authority and know you can take 
your authority through God over anything that's coming against you. It is fun. Absolutely. It is is so much fun to say, God, what are we going to do today? Right. I want to drive home the point that peace and patience are produced in us as fruit, and that takes time. And you only get out of things what you put in things. And so if you want to have more peace in your life or more patience in your life, then you need to get in God's word. You need to draw close to the Holy Spirit in prayer and in worship. And that's it. It's that simple. Yes. So as you begin it's to for do everybody. It, it isn't right. for a few elect people. He is, for I tell you a truth, God is no respecter of persons. And I'll tell you, it's just like fruit on the tree or going to the gym and working out. You're, you can go work out in a gym and come home and, and look at your muscles in the mirror and you won't see anything at first. Nope. Nope. You go again the next week, you work out and you come back home and you look at, in the mirror at your muscles and you won't see anything at all. But it's that, that daily, everyday consistency is king. It's that consistent putting in the effort that produces the results. And then all of a sudden, you'll notice measurable results all at once it seems but it wasn't at once it took time just like a fruit tree you'll see leaves on the tree and there'll be you know uh six months out of the year where there's no fruit on the tree but the tree is it's working on the inside where you can't see it right but then when the season comes after all that you know time throughout the year that consistency of water hitting the tree and nutrients and air hitting the tree, then all of a sudden, all this fruit is produced. And so, you you know, it's not going to be instant grits. You've got to put in the work. You've got to put in the consistency of getting in your word. And the word works, but you have to work the word. Absolutely. To, I recommend like a daily Bible reading plan, maybe a devotional, you know, get you a book that you as a companion Bible study book or guide. There's so many resources out there nowadays. Be in a habit. Turn off the country music. Turn off the rock music. Turn on some worship music. What you, you know, what you put in is what you get out put in worship spend some time set aside some time to pray to talk with the lord you know make it a part of your daily life to talk to the lord all day long yes it's that everyday consistency of putting in time with the lord that is going to produce the most fruit and it's that simple and it's that easy if you want to have unshakable peace in the midst of chaos in your life, that's how you get it. If you want to have patience that is that is able to just say, I don't care what it looks like, I don't care how long it takes, then you get in the Word and you, and you just apply these basic things. This is as practical as it gets, but this is highly prophetic in your life. And it works. Amen. It works. Let me just share one last thing. I know we're getting to the end. The scripture says those that come to God must believe that he is. And he's a rewarder of them that seek him. First, he rewards them with new life. And you don't get that new life in Christ without being born again. Nicodemus is What must I do to be saved? And Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye must be born again. It has nothing to do with going to church, being good, being an American, but it has everything to do with being born again. And being born again is actually when you receive you as a knowing Making a choice, I want Jesus to come into my life and be my Lord. That means a boss. And so, Beth, if you don't mind, I want us to have a a moment here. If there's, I really feel led that there's somebody out there. You're not 100% sure you're saved. You might be 99.999. 
So you got to have faith to be born again. And faith doesn't have any uh, loopholes or any place. The 99.99 isn't all the way. It's not faith. It's not 100%. Jesus said that he came that you would know you have eternal life. And so we want everybody that's listening to know, to know that you know that you know that you have eternal life. You want me to tell them how saved I am, Beth? I am so saved. (laughs) Yeah. I could swing over hell on a pea vine and spit in the devil's eye. Not because of me. There is nothing good in me. But I know who's holding me up, and I know who saved me. And I totally trust Jesus that what I have given to him, he is able to keep. And so I want to pray with you if you have never asked Jesus in your heart, or maybe you did it as a kid and you you did it, you spoke the words, but you didn't have the faith to really believe it then. Let's do it again and believe it and ready to receive it. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just go all over the world and get people ready to receive you because the time is becoming so short. So, Heavenly Father, Beth, if you'll do that part, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. I believe, I believe, Jesus was born of a virgin. Jesus was born of a virgin. He died on the cross. He died on the cross. He arose from the dead. He arose from the dead. For me. For me. Jesus. Jesus. Come in my heart. Come in my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Now, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I believe you have. I believe you have. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on the show. And we pray a special blessing of peace and patience in your life because I believe that is something all of us can benefit from is more peace and more patience. And it's prophetically powerful. I promise you that's as, as prophetic as it gets. You can hear fancy prophetic words about the future and the end times, and those are solid and valuable. But this is valuable, too, that you would walk in the fruits of the Spirit Amen. Because I believe that's a blessing in your life. Thank you so much for being back on the program. Everybody's missed you. I'm glad you're back. You had some (laughs) surgery recently, and so I'm glad you're back and doing well. And so we pray a special blessing of peace and patience on our audience. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button so you'll be informed next time I post. Thank you again and have a blessed day.